Your thyroid is a butterfly-shaped gland that sits under your Adam's apple and produces thyroid hormones which help you to regulate your metabolism. In most people, the thyroid maintains a healthy balance of these hormones which keeps your metabolism cruising along normally. However, in some people it can produce too many hormones leading to an overactive thyroid or too few leading to an underactive thyroid. If your thyroid is overactive, it speeds everything up. This leads to symptoms such as agitation, weight loss, feeling hot and restless. If your thyroid is underactive, everything slows down. This leads to symptoms like lethargy, weight gain, skin and hair problems and a low mood. The good news is, is that you can check it with a blood test. So let's take a look at your thyroid today, how it works, what happens if it goes wrong and what to do about it. Let me caveat this video. Your thyroid is a bit more complicated than I'm gonna make out today, but I'm gonna explain things for those people who don't already know loads about the thyroid. Now, in a normal thyroid blood test, there are two hormones to look at, thyroid stimulating hormone, or TSH, and thyroxine, or T4. If you're fancy, you might also be able to check a third one called T3. TSH is produced in the pituitary gland in your brain and travels to your thyroid in your neck which causes the release of T4. Most of your T4 is bound to proteins and then transported around the body. When it breaks free of the proteins it's called free T4 and that is biologically active. That's why most blood tests nowadays look at free T4 rather than total T4. You can think of T4 as actually more of a pro-hormone. It doesn't have a huge effect by itself, instead it needs to be converted to T3, which is 14 times rarer, but four times more potent. T3 then binds the thyroid receptors which are on every single cell in your body, and doing that helps control your metabolism, either speeding up the cell or slowing it down. T3 is a more volatile and unpredictable hormone than T4, which is why you tend not to measure T3 unless you're looking for something specific. If you've had a blood test which involves all three hormones and your TSH and T4 are normal, but your T3 is a bit high or a bit low, it probably won't mean much, but you can discuss this with your doctor. Now, this whole process is tightly regulated in a feedback loop. That means that when your T4 gets too high, it inhibits the release of TSH until T4 drops, which causes the TSH to be released again, and so on. Sometimes people have an issue either with the glands in the brain or with the thyroid gland itself, and these hormones become unbalanced. That's the difference between secondary and primary thyroid disease, respectively. This can lead to some of those symptoms I mentioned earlier. A thyroid blood test is also a useful test for people who already take medication and want to see if it's working properly for them and to keep an eye on their trends. Blood tests are all about trends. Now, let's look at it all in a bit more detail. Having an underactive thyroid is not uncommon. In fact, where I'm from in the UK, it's found in about 2% of the population, mostly in those over 60, especially women. It's often an autoimmune condition, which means that for whatever reason, the body has produced antibodies which attack the thyroid and stop it working properly. That's called Hashimoto's disease. Unfortunately, there's nothing you can do about this. Very occasionally, that damage can also be caused by viruses or medications as well. As it's your metabolism which is being affected, many of these symptoms are quite generalized and can overlap with a number of other conditions. So checking your thyroid can rule in a thyroid problem or it helps you to focus your thinking onto something else. You can see a list of common symptoms up over there. If left untreated, an underactive thyroid can not only lead to those symptoms, but in the long term, it can also contribute to increased cardiovascular disease and mood changes. Fortunately, an underactive thyroid is easily treated. The first port of call is T4 replacement medication, and that's called levothyroxine. This is a daily tablet and simply replaces the T4 hormone which is not being produced by your body. The aim is to get your thyroid stimulating hormone into the ideal range, which tends to be the lower half of the normal range. If you're a woman and you're considering fertility, then it's really important to keep your thyroid in check during pregnancy, and your doctor 
will tell you about this. Some people don't have a desired effect with levothyroxine, and there are other therapies out there like T3 medication or natural desiccated thyroid, but these are only really prescribed by specialists, and even then you might want to read around it to make sure it's the right thing for you. Those treatments tend to require a closer monitoring and can cause some quite out of range results. It's worth noting that there are a number of conditions which cause symptoms which mimic those of a thyroid condition. So if your thyroid test is normal, other things to look at might be your sugar levels, your kidney function, your vitamin and mineral levels, especially your iron. And if you're a woman, things like your hormones, especially around the age of menopause, where that condition causes a bunch of issues which are like thyroid problems. In my practice, I think the education for menopause in the UK is really poor. I see a lot of women who are convinced they have a thyroid problem, but it's actually the menopause. And it's frustrating that our health education is not great when it comes to this, or let's face it, women in general. Medical history is mostly male, sorry about that. But things are changing and I'll go into a bit more detail about that in the female hormone video later. Having an overactive thyroid is also not uncommon. The condition, also known as thyrotoxicosis or hyperthyroidism, again affects about 2% of the population. It's far more common in women than in men and tends to hit people in their 30s to 60s. Again, this is normally an autoimmune condition called Graves' disease. You can see some of the more common overactive symptoms here, and if left untreated, it can lead to a lot of those symptoms. But when it's very overactive, it can be really serious and sometimes a medical emergency, causing dangerous things like heart arrhythmias and very high blood pressures. You can treat an overactive thyroid in three main ways. One, with medication that reduces your thyroid hormone levels. That's things like carbimazole or propyl thyroyuracil. With any luck, this will get your levels back to normal and then you might even come off medication altogether. But if the medication doesn't work, there are a couple of other treatments. Number two, with radioactive iodine, which sounds pretty scary, but don't worry. The thyroid is really the only gland in your body which laps up iodine, and in so doing, it's the only part of your body that gets destroyed. That means that you don't have a functioning thyroid afterwards. You essentially have an underactive thyroid. And so we treat it just like an underactive thyroid with levothyroxine. And number three, with surgery, where you cut your thyroid out. And again, you'll need to replace your thyroid hormones after that. So that's your thyroid in a butterfly-shaped nutshell chrysalis, whatever. Look, the blood tests are the best way to check it. There are even more specialized blood tests out there which look at your thyroid antibodies or those which look at reverse T3, though they're a bit high-end and not for today. If you want to know about them, just comment your comments in the comments and I'll think about making a video. For now though, thanks for watching, I hope this helps. Have a great day, I'll see you next time.